The Rune Factory series is a spin-off of the Farm Life Story of Season series which itself was formerly known as Harvest Moon. Yoshifumi Hashimoto, producer of both series, once described Rune Factory as Harvest Moon where you wield a sword, and this introduction of more of an ARPG element to complement the farming has gained a huge fanbase since the first game released back in 2006 in Japan on the Nintendo DS. Will Rune Factory 5 is now about to release on the Nintendo Switch here in the West. Will Rogers once said that a farmer had to be an optimist or he wouldn't still be a farmer. Will that optimism reap what is sowed, or is it going to be a bleak harvest? I'm Glenn Bolger, thank you to Marvelous Europe for the review code, and now, let's find out. Kill your little slice of the frontier. In terms of the story, after choosing your character, the tale begins and sees our protagonist coming to the aid of a local town resident after they are attacked by monsters. Injured in the process, you are taken to the local town called Rigbath, which serves as an outpost for a peacekeeping organisation called Seed, and after some discussion, you are offered the job of ranger for the town. It does follow the familiar trope of having the protagonist suffer from amnesia, but I did feel the story flowed better than other entries in the series and moved at a better pace because of it. On to the gameplay then, and as with its predecessors, Rune Factory 5 is a hybrid of farm life simulation and action RPG. You are given a small plot of land to begin with and will acquire certain tools which allow you to clear trees and stones before planting crops and flowers etc, dropping them into a shipping bin to earn money and then using this money to buy more crops but also to improve your home, both in terms of furnishing it and expanding it. You are not alone though as you are part of the local community and you can frequent the local town whenever you want in order to visit the various shops or to talk to the locals. You are ultimately able to get married should you forge a strong enough bond with someone through conversations, giving gifts or asking them to join you on adventures and I think I'm right in saying that this is the first Rune Factory game to implement same sex marriage, something that has been a feature in the last few Story of Seasons games and is now available in this series too. The town people are a likeable and eccentric bunch and there will be plenty of cutscenes to allow you to get to know them better. If the game detects Rune Factory 4 data on your Switch, then a couple of the characters from that particular game will visit the town of Rigbath on occasion too. To help you bond with the other town folk, you can opt to participate in festivals at certain points throughout the year, and these include harvest festivals, cooking festivals, or the bean tossing festival which plays out like a mini game. These do add some longevity as you attempt to improve your standing from the previous year as you move on through the game. You yourself can arrange festivals by using the directive system. This system works via seed points which can be earned through your actions and they allow you to purchase perks or events such as the aforementioned festivals or you can use them to expand the size of your bag or your storage boxes for example. There is also the dragon aspect of the game. You will be seeking out elemental dragons as the game progresses and you can warp onto the back of these farm dragons as they are known and use this space as further land to cultivate. You are able to improve other buildings throughout the town as well as your own farm which will then increase the stock they may sell or the service they provide meaning that there is a lot of potential to enhance the game world. Monster barns can be purchased and any enemies you tame will then live here as part of your livestock. This is all before we have even mentioned the combat aspect of the game and this handles in a similar fashion to Rune Factory 4 in that enemies are produced by orbs that you will find when you're out adventuring and the orb must be destroyed to stop the flow of enemies. When fighting in dungeons, which we'll talk about more in a moment, certain rooms or areas will be sealed off until you have destroyed all enemies on screen. The best bit about this series is that you can invest as much or as little time into each part as you want. If you want to focus just on farming, you can. If you enjoy the combat, you can visit areas and take on enemies, or if you want to be a complete socialite, then you can do this too. Having said that, there are missions available though to add some structure to proceedings, and accepting a story mission will open up new areas of the world for you to explore as you, in your ranger capacity, investigate a potential new threat to the town. 
It will bring a new cast of enemies to discover as you make your way to the new location, generally a dungeon of some description, and these then culminate in a boss battle to clear the mission. These dungeons are varied in both setting and in terms of the traps and puzzles that you may need to solve to advance, and the change to a full 3D world for this entry definitely benefits the adventuring and fighting side of the game more than the farming in my opinion, and for the first time in a Room Factory game, I completely neglected my farm for long stretches to go on the next adventure as soon as it became available. Practically every action you perform in the game can level up from sleeping, to walking, to using particular weapons or magic, and leveling these up will improve your proficiency at said action. You can learn new skills for each weapon by doing this, plus on top of that, your character can level up as a whole, which will then improve your base stats. You can even use your spell seal ability once you've earned it to capture enemies to then fight beside you for a brief period of time, or you can invite NPCs to accompany you on adventures. I would have loved to have seen a two player mode here where players share loot and gain levels to bring back to their respective games, but alas it is a single player affair only. As well as the main story missions you have side quests such as trying to catch wanted monsters for example, this will then earn you seed points, and resident requests are also pinned to the request board, and these will net you rewards that drip feed you the tools that will assist you throughout your time with the game. Then there are the romance missions which will increase your relationship status with particular characters, although these are mainly cutscene based as you follow an objective marker on the map to move the side story on. Control wise basic actions are handled well enough with everything nice and responsive but my two biggest gripes with the game do probably relate to controls. The first is the way that your tools and weapons are handled. You can assign a tool to left on the d-pad and a weapon to right and whilst this does work fine you need to continually swap out the item that is hotkeyed via your rucksack. Personally I would have preferred the option to scroll through my tools too. The button setup is pretty maxed out so I do appreciate it would have taken some creative thinking but it would have worked better in my opinion. There is also a slight issue with the camera control. Now not in general, for the most part it does work absolutely fine, but when moving onto your plot of farmland, the camera can be a little awkward to navigate, either being a bit too dynamic as you are trying to perform basic actions, or zooming out and changing the perspective you were experiencing, meaning the storage bin would now be on the east as opposed to the north as you were looking at it. It is a bit disorientating, but I did find that turning off the camera auto assist in the menu helped with some of this, and it is a small wrinkle in the jump from 2D to 3D that will hopefully be ironed out in the next instalment. All in all, the change to 3D has been a successful one. Rune Factory 5 improves the action aspect of its gameplay substantially in my opinion, and the move to 3D plays a big part in this improvement. Add to that the classic town building and farm life element, and you have a very fun experience awaiting you. Gameplay scores 19 out of 20. Controls do the basics well, but a few of the shortcuts could have been improved, and the camera fares better for adventuring than it does for farming, and on the whole, they score 15 out of 20. In terms of the visuals, the town of Rigbath is a pleasant place, with shops and buildings all having a certain degree of character. The residents are a fun bunch with vastly different designs, and meeting a character for the first time sees a flashy anime intro play out. As I mentioned before, dungeons are varied and the world does have a rich and colourful feel to it in terms of the surroundings you encounter. I also really liked the almost cell shaded look to bosses, with their thick black outlines making them stand out and increasing their intimidation level. As much as the jump to 3D has enhanced the experience on the whole, it has perhaps diminished the charm to a small extent, especially on the farming side. The disproportionately large sunflowers, corn on the cobs or succulent looking tomatoes of Rune Factory 4 are replaced with more realistically sized and therefore not quite as aesthetically pleasing designs more in keeping with the bigger, more open 3D world. Performance wise, while the game does run okay most of the time, there are some occasions of slowdown when a large number of people have congregated for a festival for example, and when entering or leaving a building. There is also some popping as you make your way around the world. Both of these issues are more prominent in handheld mode as opposed to docked, but they are noticeable whichever way you play. Audio wise the score seems to always provide just what the game needs for any given situation. 
You'll get adventurous and foreboding when entering a dungeon, swashbuckling and heroic when making your way through the enemy infested environments, and calming and relaxing when running around town or attending to your crops. Voice acting is used at times, usually to accentuate important story related parts of cutscenes, and the voice acting is fair with voices matching the character designs. The graphics help create a rich and vibrant world, although perhaps some of the seasonal charm of the farming side has been lost in the transition to 3D, plus a few technical hiccups are present, and visuals including performance score 15 out of 20. Audio just fits the game like a glove to be honest, and it is a joy to listen to, it scores 19 out of 20. Rune Factory 5 costs £49.99 and regional equivalents are on your screen now. Yes, this is on par with first party titles price wise, but to be fair, this could become a real time sink if you let it. There is the story to follow, but you could quite easily spend just as much time, if not more in fact, completely ignoring this and focusing on the farming or the interior design aspects, growing relationships and building up the town. There is a huge amount to do here and the switch to 3D does make it feel quite fresh. If you are a physical collector, there is a standard edition which can be acquired for about five to seven pounds cheaper than that eShop version judging by retail websites. Plus there is a collector's edition available with an art book and a soundtrack. There's a huge amount to do here and value gets 19 out of 20. To conclude, Rune Factory 5 is another strong entry into this farming and battling hybrid series. It will please fans who have been eagerly anticipating its release, but it also serves as a very good entry point for newcomers in my opinion. I feel this is the best the balance between the two sides of the gameplay has ever been, at least for my personal tastes, and I was just as keen to take new missions on as I was to forget the rest of the world and get my farm up to scratch. There are a few slight performance issues and the jump to 3D affects the farming side more than the combat side, but this is still a fantastic game and well worth ploughing some serious time into. Rune Factory 5 gets a switch up score of 87%. Thank you everybody for watching this review, I hope you enjoyed it, please do remember to leave a like if you did. Is this a game that you'll be picking up? Let us know in the comments section, and which is your favourite side to the game? Do you like the farming, or the battling, or are you someone that likes a bit of both? A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support, and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care, and until next time, happy gaming. Thank you.